what's good i'm back again with another video and today i'm going to show you how i repaired my skin barrier with a little basic little skincare routine if you don't know what a skin barrier is or if you don't know how to tell if your skin barrier has been compromised make sure to watch the first part of my skin barrier series right up here or in the description box down below now let's get started with how to repair your skin barrier a few general tips number one wash your face with lukewarm water avoid washing your face in hot shower hot water only further damages your skin barrier Number two, wash your face with a low pH cleanser that doesn't foam. Your skin should feel bouncy and hydrated after cleansing, not tight and dry. Number four, look for products that include ceramides, pro-vitamin B5, as well as fatty acids. I'll explain why a little bit later. Number five, cut back on all actives. That includes AHAs, BHAs, and vitamin C serums. Even if you have active breakouts, AHAs and BHAs will not help your skin if your barrier is damaged, so you have to cut them out. At least until your barrier is stabilized, you know what I'm saying? Number six, be sure to supplement your skincare routine with a balanced diet and drink lots of water. So, on to the skincare routine. Step number one, I do this every single night double cleanse. So the first part of the double cleanse is using an oil-based cleanser to remove makeup and other impurities. And the second part is using a water-based cleanser to actually cleanse the skin. So my favorite oil-based cleanser is the Clinique Take the Day Off Cleansing Balm. And I just use this to remove makeup, excess sebum, and you know, a bunch of environmental impurities. And I have three low pH cleansers that I really like. So the first is the Paula's Choice Resist Optimal Results Hydrating Cleanser. This contains glycerin and it has like a lotion-y type of texture which can remove makeup, but I just prefer using a cleansing balm first. The second low pH cleanser that I really like is the Glossier Milky Jelly Cleanser. This contains glycerin, sodium hyaluronate, pro-vitamin B5, and it has like a jelly-like consistency, which can also remove makeup as well, but again, I just prefer using a cleansing balm. And the third low pH cleanser that I love is the CeraVe Hydrating Cleanser. This contains hyaluronic acid and ceramides it doesn't foam and it is definitely one of my favorite facial cleansers that is low pH plus it's accessible it's drugstore and it's pretty inexpensive step number two is a serum and this is going to help repair the skin so do not use any serums that contain active ingredients like AJ's BHA's or vitamin C they're only going to hurt your skin right now instead of help to repair it. So choose serums that include ceramides, provitamin B5, and or fatty acids. Ceramides are intercellular lipids found naturally in the skin that are essential for the overall health of our skin. It has been observed in multiple studies that I researched that in most skin disorders with a compromised skin barrier function, there is a decreased ceramide content present in the skin. So. Do with that information what you will. Pro-vitamin B5, on the other hand, is an ingredient that benefits a damaged skin barrier by stabilizing it and enhancing the skin's natural repair process. And fatty acids such as omegas 3, 6, and 9 are all skin restoring ingredients. So here's a list of my favorite serums that I've been using personally. The first one is the Drunk Elephant B Hydra Intensive Hydration Gel. This contains pro-vitamin B5 and pineapple ceramide. This is not a moisturizer. I almost always seal everything in with a moisturizer on top of this, but it does add an extra layer of hydration, which is exactly what dehydrated skin needs. The second is the Drunk Elephant Virgin Marula Luxury Facial Oil. This stuff is full of antioxidants and contains omega-9 fatty acid, oleic acid, which helps restore skin and it also helps to reduce redness, inflammation, dryness, and more. I also almost never use this as a moisturizer. I usually mix it in with either the hydration gel or my moisturizer. The Ordinary also has a virgin marula oil that is much more affordable. However, I have not personally tried it myself, so I can't really give you an opinion on it, but the option is there if you wanna try it out for yourself. And I also really like the Paula's Choice Resist Omega Plus Complex. I misplaced the bottle and I don't know where it is, but here it is on the Polish Choice website. It contains a bunch of ceramides, linoleic acid, and other omega-3, 6, and 9 fatty acids. 
And step number three is to moisturize. So moisturizers don't necessarily only provide hydration, but they also help regulate and prevent hydration loss as well. So there are many different types of moisturizing ingredients, and honestly, that is for another video, but here are the moisturizers that I personally like to use. So for the morning, I like oil-free occlusive moisturizers. I stray away from very emollient moisturizers in the morning because I have oily skin. This is the Tatcha Water Cream. This moisturizer contains dimethicone, which acts as an extra barrier to prevent hydration loss. You guys have probably seen this um, in some of my videos before or on Snapchat, and I told you I would give you um, like an update on it. After using it for a while, I don't think it's worth the $70, and I think you can find a much more affordable moisturizer that works. Uh, better. <laughs> but that was just my opinion and my experience. This is the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Water Gel. This also contains nemethicone as well as hyaluronic acid. And the silicones in this makes my skin feel super, super soft and I just love the way that it makes my skin feel. Another moisturizer that I really like is the Misha Super Aqua Ultra Waterful Clear Cream. Wow. Most moisturizers have water as the first ingredient, whereas this one's first ingredient is Betula platyphala japonica juice, which is an ingredient used for hydration and skin conditioning. This is an awesome moisturizer because it's super moisturizing and it still contains glycerin. However, it has more of like a matte finish because uh, the texture is more like gel-like. So for the evening, I don't mind really emollient moisturizers because I'm going to be sleeping anyway. Starting off with the first moisturizer, I really, really like the Misha Super Aqua Cell Renew Snail Cream. This stuff contains 70% snail secretion filtrate, which is a very popular ingredient in Korean skincare because of its repairing properties. It really helps to strengthen and repair the skin and increase its elasticity. Another moisturizer I like using for the evening is the Derma E Hydrating Night Cream with Hyaluronic Acid. This is a very, very emollient moisturizer, so you will love this if you have dry skin. I personally love the way my skin feels when I wake up the next morning because it really does feel like it helped retain all that hydration in my skin. Like my skin feels very bouncy, it feels hydrated. The next product is actually an overnight sleeping mask. So this is the Overnight Vitalizing Mask by Sulwaso. This stuff is incredible. It actually contains glycerin, squalene, shea butter, and dimethicone, as well as scutellaria root and walnut extract to provide extra nourishment. It also does not feel as heavy, rich, or like greasy as a lot of other sleeping masks. Again, this is a sleeping mask, so I don't use this every night, just two to three times per week. This last product is one of my favorite moisturizers at the moment. I've mentioned this many times on social media and in previous videos, but it's the Claire's Rich Moist Soothing Cream. It contains triglyceride, glycerin, shea butter, and ceramide 3. It is formulated without parabens or animal-based ingredients. It's perfect for all skin types, so I would highly recommend this product for skincare beginners. So that was my night skincare routine. So for my morning skincare routine, it's pretty much the same, only I skip the oil cleanser in step number one, and I add a sunscreen as step number four. Cause you gotta protect your skin from those UV rays, you know what I'm saying, bro? Wow, uh, that was a lot of words. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a lot because I learned a lot just researching. Again, I am not a skincare professional, so take my advice at your own discretion. Sources will be linked in the description box. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe for more skincare videos, and I'll catch you guys next time.